Hi, I'm Jeremy, and today I'm going to show you a game by the name of Bazaar. And this game was designed originally by Sid Saxon back in 1967, I believe. Uh, the game was originally published as part of the 3M bookshelf line. And it's a, essentially a game where players are going to be collecting and trading gemstones in hope of scoring points. The trick being that when they turn in their gemstones to score a scoring card, they want to have the fewest gemstones remaining in their play area. I'll take a moment to show you how it plays, and I'll come back here and tell you my thoughts on it. Okay, so this is what a setup of Bazaar will look like. Um, you will create four stacks of five cards each. There will be some cards that aren't used during the game. You'll have a bank of multicolored gemstones, and then you're going to take two of these exchange tiles, and the game comes with about ten of them. So you'll just be using two in each game. And this is going to be a game where players are going to be trying to collect the stones to meet the orders that are placed on these cards. And when they do that, they're going to want to turn in their stones and have the fewest remaining gemstones of after they've done their exchange. And on your turn, you're just going to do one of two things. You're either going to roll the die, and you're going to take a gemstone of that color. So here it would take a red. And you'll note that it has all five colors on it, and then it also has a lamp. If you roll the lamp, you could pick any gemstone of your choice. And let's say I roll again and get a yellow. And the other thing that you could do on your turn is turn in a gemstone as the exchange market shows. So for example, here I could turn in a yellow for a blue and a red. And either of those things would consume your turn. And this market actually works both ways. So if I wanted to, I could turn in this blue and red to get a yellow also. So you'll have these 10 options to both ways during the game. And again, you're going to be trying to get what is shown on here. So on my next turn, I might roll again and have it get a blue. And then on a subsequent turn, I might turn in this blue for two white and a green. And now I could and you can see this is quite a thinky game as you're puzzling through all of these options. I could turn in the uh, white for a red, a yellow, and a blue. Um, and then... I could turn in on the next turn, these two for a green. Alright, so now I would have enough here to complete this card. So I would turn in the two green, so the card here. I'd turn in two green, two red, and a blue. Those go back to the bank. I look at how many gemstones I have left. Here I have two. And then you'll look at this chart. So you can ignore the last column for now, but you can see I've turned in a card. It does not have a star in the middle. Some of the more challenging ones do. So I've turned in a card and I have two gemstones remaining. I would get two points. And you would have to score this on a pad and paper or use some other marker such as pennies or you know other game components to keep your score. This version does not come with a score pad. Other versions do. So I would just you know take this card. This card would get flipped face up and then play would continue, and I'd have those two gems already in the bank. Again, if I ever completed a card with one star on it, I would use this scoring column to determine my score based on the number of gemstones that I have remaining. And play will just continue like this with players turning in gemstones for cards, scoring points, until one of these uh, piles of cards is empty. At that point, all no star cards will count as one star cards, and all one star cards will count as two star cards. So you'll, you'll ignore that scoring column and score these two. And play will just continue until a player then depletes this you know, second pile. When there are only two piles remaining, the game immediately ends. Whoever has the most points will win. Okay, so that is bizarre, and I think for a game that was published originally in 1967, this is really amazing. Um, there are a lot of Euro games nowadays that are essentially resource conversion or efficiency games, and this predates them all and does a lot of what those do games do more simply and more efficiently than those games. Um, 
I think we could look at current contemporary games like Splendor and see this as you know a definite ancestor to those games. And in some ways, this is a more thinky, more satisfying game than something like Splendor, which is lighter. Um, the game, it does play from two to six players in about 30 to 45 minutes. The box here says ages eight and up. I think that the, all, that's right about on all counts. I would just maybe suggest as far as player counts. Um, generally, I like to cap this around four. Um, with six players, it does play fine. There's no problem with the mechanics. It's just that you have a little bit less control over whether or not you're going to be able to grab those cards. And if you know four players grab cards in front of you, all of a sudden you're left with a lot of gems with um, no way to have planned with the, you know for what the new cards are. So that's just something that you'll run into in a higher player count game. But overall, this is a game that plays very smoothly. The rules are so easy to understand. Everybody will be able to grasp it immediately. But there's a real difficult puzzle involved in trading the gems from one sort to the other in order to, you know, efficiently claim those cards, especially with that wrinkle of a rule in there that however many gems you have at, after you've done your trade will affect your scoring. So it's a game that really rewards, you know, forth, forward thinking, but at the same time playing against other players requires you to claim the card as quickly as possible. The fact that it comes with uh, 10 of these conversion sheets um, is really terrific. It means that there's no way to really just crack the puzzle. You'll just choose two of those at random and all of a sudden the entire economy of the game is going to change. So this is one of those games that, you know, is not something that I pull out every time I want to play a, you know, a puzzle game. You know, I do, you know, play something like Splendor more often these days, but this is something that's just um, an amazing design, especially for its age. It's something that I have, you know, no small amount of respect for. It's a game that I would encourage most players to check out. I don't know that it's currently in print, but this is a Griffin Games edition that I purchased a few years ago, and there are tons of copies of this, the old 3M edition even, if you look at flea markets or um, secondhand stores or eBay or what have you. So it's not a hard game to track down, and it's a game that still absolutely holds up today. You will, will definitely enjoy it if you like this kind of um, goods trading efficiency puzzle game. So those are my thoughts on Bazaar, and thanks for watching.